New Orleans at the Louisiana Superdome, Miami and Florida ready to go in the Nokia Sugar Bowl and here come the Gators. with my partner Gary Danielson. Gary, let's start with Miami. What about their weapons in this game? Oh, Brent, uh, you know, they've got weapons all along. They can power you with the running game, but they have great balance and an extremely focused football team. And I would be, too, if I was Ken Dorsey and I had two receivers like this. They've got a lot of NFL teams that would like to have Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne as a pair of receivers. These two guys got the speed and the power to come across the middle as balanced an offensive football team in college football. And across the way, the SEC champions from Gainesville, what do they counter with? Brent, I think when you look at Florida, you look at athletes, and you look at a lot of big game experience from these guys. They've got a hot quarterback, and they've got a hot running back that's extremely important. Ernest Graham, 169 yards in the SEC championship game. He must come through to help a young quarterback. And here come the Canes. Butch Davis, who has done a fine job of resurrecting this program. Let's go down to Jack Aroot. Well, one of the changes at the end of the season, Brent, was the loss of defensive coordinator Greg Shiano to Rutgers. Coach, how did that affect things? Well, fortunately, uh, all the position coaches obviously stayed intact. We worked really hard. I I helped a lot with the, with the game plan, but these guys uh, Chuck Pagano and Vernon Hargraves and Greg Mark, these guys did a great job, and our players obviously uh, been together for about two years. They're ready to go. And your defensive leader, Morgan, yeah. middle linebacker, how important is he to have a big game tonight? Oh, God. Well, obviously, as talented as they are on offense, it's all of your defensive playmakers have got to step up tonight and have good games. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Folks, it is flat and nasty <laughs> outside in the 30s with a fierce wind at 13 miles an hour. The water just cuts right through you, but inside, comfortable 72 degrees with Lido Shepard back deep as the Gators win the opening toss. No deferring on Steve Spurrier's part. He took the ball right away with Todd Sievers set to kick it off here for the Canes. Ratliff at the 10. Well short of the 20-yard line on a high, fine kickoff, allowing the coverage to get down the field. And now, redshirt freshman Rex Grossman leads the Gators out onto the field. This is a young man who lit up Auburn in the SEC title game in Atlanta with four touchdown passes. He's from Bloomington South High School in Indiana. They won a state championship there. And after that performance against Auburn, he was voted the MVP, and he now brings the Gators up to the line for their first down. Ernest Graham, the ringleader. The Gators will try to mix it up, but you know Steve Spurrier. He's got to get long and get there as soon as he can. Grossman looking deep. Comes down the near side. He's got Gaffney open. Gaffney incomplete out of bounds. Out of bounds on the reception. It was close, folks. Gaffney shaking his head like he thought he had it. A double move on the first play of the game. Gaffney, the playmakers, going right at it, right in front. Play action pass. Here's the end of the play. Beautiful throw, and just the right foot lands out of bounds. <laughs> so it'll be second down and ten. Big 12 officiating crew. They were all over it. Play fake to Graham again. Intermediate route and he misses Gaffney again. Let's take a look now at the Nokia offensive lineup and it faces a third down. We mentioned Graham. He rushed for 169 yards in the SEC title game. He will see action. We've seen Gaffney, Orishay Caldwell, number 17, the other go to guy. The offensive line. Notice the tackles, folks. Mike Pearson and Kenyatta Walker. Outstanding. They protect. Grossman from both sides. Kenyatta may leave school early, wind up in the NFL. That would be a big loss for Coach Spurrier, who cannot believe that he didn't hit that first down play. He now faces a third and ten.
Bo Carroll goes into the pass formation way deep. It, don't even know what he was throwing at that time. That was over the safety's head as he faced a rush back there. And now Grossman is a little bit gimpy. Appears to be okay now as he trots off to the side. Probably more embarrassed than anything. Well, Brent, he was knocked down on his first two throws. And if I thought there was one matchup that favored Florida in this game, the biggest one would have been their offensive line against Miami's defensive line. So far, Miami has knocked him down twice in this game and forced both bad throws. Santana Moss would dearly love to haul back. Punt number five for a touchdown. That's right, he's returned four already. Allen Line knows he's up against a dangerous one here. So the Canes looking to jump early. Deep off the right. They try to seal Santana up on the sideline, try to get an extra defender. He spins away. Here he comes, folks. 45. He's a magic man. Out of bounds at the Gators' 41-yard line. Woo. Whoa, is he exciting. That's a 27-yard return, and punter Allen Ryan is forced to knock him out of bounds. He's one of those guys that is so good, Brent, that Butch Davis, whose teams have blocked 39 kicks in his career, said we had to change our style. We don't go for as many block kicks as we used to because this guy's so valuable when he has the ball in his hands, we go for the returns now. Now Kenny Dorsey brings the Canes out. They'll work with half a field. Good opportunity to strike quickly. Dorsey dumps incomplete. Reggie Wayne, the intended receiver, he objects to being pushed after the pass. Now let's check in with Jack Arute. Uh, Jack, uh, was Grossman shaken up down there? Yeah, Brent, when he came off to the sidelines, he was favoring his right ankle. In fact, he was limping on it just a bit. He has not, and I repeat, not sought any medical attention, however. And you can see that's the second, that's the third down play, but he gets rolled over just as he lets the ball go. I think I saw Big Damian Lewis blowing that offensive line up that time. He usually plays well in big games. Second down and 10. Come back with Jackson. He spins away to the 38. Alex Brown making his stop. And so Kenny Dorsey, who has come all the way from California to the East Bay Area across the bridge from San Francisco. First team all Big East. Folks, that's important <laughs> because he beat out you-know-who. One Michael Vick who lit up Clemson for Virginia Tech yesterday. Now Butch Davis, he will be calling the defensive plays. As Greg Schiano has moved on to the head coach of Rutgers, so he has lost a top assistant for this game. Canes need to reach the Florida 31-yard line. Dorsey stays in the pocket, throws, caught, first down. Miami right at the 30-yard line, and he kept it low, couldn't be well defended, and picked up Santana Moss. Yeah, you can see the difference in the pr protection, and they complete him. And here is the Nokia. Miami lineup with James Jackson there behind the freshman DJ Williams. The offensive line again, two more outstanding tackles. Bryant McKinney and Joaquin Gonzalez. We have got four just simply superb offensive tackles in this football game. Now on the first down, Dorsey incomplete. Now defensively for the Gators here tonight. This is the defensive line. Buck Gurley shaking off that injury. He'll play. Gerald Warren is probably Gerard probably the best of that inside group Travis Carroll the transfer from Alabama will have to watch the run against Miami Miami a very balanced team and it's Lito Shepard and Robert Cromarty who need to tune it up on the corners they were torched up in Tallahassee and Alex Brown one of the ringleaders gets down and ready to go now with Clinton Portis in on second down Dorsey going to fire out of bounds. He wanted Santana Moss, but there was superb coverage by Cromarty. The junior from East Point, Georgia, number 25, was there. Has his hands full every time he goes with him, Gary. Story of the football game so far is these quarterbacks don't have time to set their feet. Makes it easy to cover these guys. Speed guys. Nice job putting that little butt into him right there, but the ball was clearly out of bounds, and uh, that's because, so far, the pass rush from both teams are dominating the quarterbacks. And that's why we've got these stats. Dorsey's 1 of 4. Grossman was 0 of 3. And, and, and Brent, i got to say, that surprises me. These two offensive lines I thought would be able to handle the pass rush. 
Using dime coverage here, six defensive backs for Florida, and a timeout by Dorsey. He'll go over to the sideline. Well, guys, I think we have to say adios. How close is this series? Florida leads by only one game, and folks, 19 of them have been decided by a touchdown or less. So a rivalry renewed. Now Miami with a third and ten. They need to reach the 20-yard line for a first down here at the opening quarter. Shotgun from Dorsey. They'll throw underneath it, and Dorsey goes down, incomplete to Santana. And the story of this game is the pressure, the heat being brought, and number 13, who's playing with a little bit of a black eye, has got <laughs> vengeance on his mind, folks. He was the one casualty that we know of in that Bourbon Street brawl last Wednesday night. Somebody apparently came over the top and decked Big Alex as that rumble unfolded over there. Well, he almost gave Brian McKinney, the great left tackle for Miami, a black eye, his first sack ever. 47-yard field goal attempt. No good. So Todd Sievers misses the 47-yarder. Neither team can strike on their first possession, and the ball goes over to Florida. So, so far, Gary, this game has been dominated by both defensive lines. Yeah, and I'm surprised Miami, a, a running team, predominantly a running team, they've only run the ball one time in the game. Florida has not rushed the ball yet. Both teams need to slow that defensive pass rush with a little bit of a run game here. Horseman leads the Gators back. Is the slot man, and they'll try Ernest Graham. And off a second effort, he makes it to about the 31 yard line, but it was all effort against this Nokia defense. Now, here's the defensive line with William Joseph and Damian Lewis, numbers 92 and 94, playing very well off the start. I don't have to tell you about their middle linebacker. Number 44 is simply the defensive player of the year in college football. Dan Morgan captured every honor imaginable. These fellows with their hands full. And there's a first down to Caldwell. Turned upside down at midfield by Edward Reed, the safety. But it's a 20-yard gain. And now the Gators are on the move. Well, you talk about the great tandem of wide receivers for Miami. But in Caldwell and Gaffney, you know Florida, at least in yards, is better than them. Of course, they throw the ball more, but Caldwell's emergence in the second half of the season has really given Spurrier another great weapon. Philip Buchanan, the corner, was well driven off the ball that time by Caldwell. And so Grossman now fires, and this time he's got Caldwell on the other side. Down at the 36-yard line, that's another Florida first down. 13 more yards, and number 17 stands up for Grossman. Well, we take a look at what Dell Game Solutions when Florida has the ball. Steve will probe and then look for precision. You see he's found something already in the curl pass. Graham is the man. He has to run the ball. Miami's defense must contain, and they must tackle. That's the key to the big plays for Florida. If you miss your tackles, they'll take it to the house. So Grossman, who has a superb record in high school and college ball on artificial turf, takes it back again. Hit on the release to the middle. And Bobo, incomplete in the end zone as Buchanan juggled it, and it went into the end zone. William Joseph again coming inside, putting pressure and forcing the quarterback to throw the ball before he was ready. Should have been intercepted, could have been intercepted by Buchanan, I guess. Would have been a tough catch. But the ball was off target again because of the thing that everybody who's ever thrown the ball knows. Can't throw it when someone's right in your face. Right at the end, big 94. Joe, look at that. Right off the back foot. Can't do it very often. Like that. Well, second down and 10 for Grossman and the Gators. In the middle of that Florida offensive line is under fire. Play fake, fires high, incomplete, and off the hands of Mike Rumpf, the DB. And you know, we've talked about artificial turf and how you cut on it, and I asked quarterback Rex Grossman why he seemed to be so successful on turf in the dome.
in our offense, it definitely helps, you know, because it's a very precise uh, offense, and you got to make sharp cuts and run good routes. So definitely, you know, we, we like to play on AstroTurf in the Dome. Timing means everything to Spurrier's offense. This is third and ten. He needs to pick up the first down. He does just that. And he puts it into Taylor Jacobs' hands. Very simple. Everybody wants to know about Spurrier's offense. There's no magic here. Flat curl coming inside. One guy goes out, one guy comes in, throw the ball right to the curl. It's the first pass play you put in. One guy goes out, one guy comes in. That's as big a hole as you can have throwing the ball. And when you give them time, that's the precision that that quarterback Rex Grossman was talking about. Right? On this drive, Gary, Grossman's completed three passes. Already 46 yards. He's driven them down inside the 25 yard line on the move. Well blocked this time. Got a man wide open. It's Kirk. Takes it on in. Kirk Wells from Riverdale, Georgia. A 23 yard scoring strike from Rex Grossman to his tight end. All alone as the Canes blow coverage on it. You're right. Probing and probing probing sends two receivers one way and then you cross the tight end underneath this is no big deal this is no magic you don't have to visit uh, go down to visit the University of Florida everybody's got this route this was a blown coverage by Miami whistle before the snap so that was a very impressive 70 yard drive by the head ball coach over there, Mr. Steve Spurrier and Rex Grossman. And Al Dabin takes charge here, and uh, there's Steve going right to work with Rex already. Yeah, he says he's learning. That's what he always says. He's learning. How's Rex doing, coach? He's learning. He's learning. That's about as good as he'll go for him. But he did say in that SEC championship he was spectacular throwing the football. Gary, this is the third time. That's his game. Outside on the defense. After this, is go. Try again. I assume they just go ahead and kick it. Ordinarily, that would help you if you needed it to. Uh, Gators don't hear early in the game. You know, Gary, this is about the uh, third time we've seen the head ball coach yep. here in the last month. And Spurrier comes up with new wrinkles. He had that well read when he sent that tight end right straight across the good. You used to that play in the NFL. Oh, that's, a, that's a very simple one, and I'm surprised that Miami, that plays a lot of man uh, defense, let him cross like that. So Jeff Chandler. 138 games under Coach Spurrier at Gainesville, and they have at least one touchdown pass now in 133 of them. Absolutely phenomenal. So the Canes looking to rally here with Andre Johnson and Daryl Jones back deep. Jones will come out. Busts into an opening. Forced out of bounds at the 37-yard line. First down at 10 for Miami. Down a touchdown. They'll come back with Jackson and see if they can run. And they've got a little something going on first down. Yeah, only the second time this game that they've run the ball and they need to do that. Let's look at the Dell game solutions now. For when Miami has the ball, they need to pound the ball. They got a great offensive line for Miami. Then they need to protect the ball. Florida has 40 takeaways, and then they need to protect the quarterback to get the big play. Florida's defense, they're very quick. Quickness inside out will produce big plays for the Florida defense. Come right up the gut at Dorsey. He does not scramble well. They continue to move Alex Brown over toward the strong side of the formation now they stand him up back him off the line Dorsey had a short drop beautiful to Santana Moss Santana stays on his feet to the 39 yard line for 18. he's a little fellow but he's strong yeah well you got a guy like that Santana Moss you got a quarterback that checks off to an easy slant here and look at him I like him I like him because yes he is very fast but he doesn't give up on a play. He tries to finish it off with a big play. He just doesn't fall down. He gets extra yards. Brent, when you watch him practice, he's like a coach on the field with his team. It's a wonderful player. Goes down at the end of 39, and Dorsey going to throw it again. Snaps it off to Reggie Wayne, a penalty flag. 
Wayne has enough for the first down pending the outcome of this penalty. Lito Shepard is the defensive back. And there's the difference. There's the physical wide receiver in Wayne who's just all over Shepard who he says, listen, you might not be as fast as you, Lito, but I'm going to take you right up the field and just physically back and in a timing route, Dorsey puts it right there. It was a 12-yard gain on this pass. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll decline that penalty. Holding on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. First and 10. Fake Dorsey has time. Fires bad pass. Almost intercepted. Threw behind his target that time. That's a bad open for Florida right there. Remember the Florida State game when Benny Alexander dropped the touch an interception? And then Florida State stuck it in the end zone right after that? Here's one at Florida. Could have had it. Coming from the outside, pressure from the outside. Alex Brown gets it, forces Dorsey to throw the ball just a little early, and this one could have been a pick. Should have been a pick. Dropped right there, and they give this Miami offense at second and 10 another opportunity. Robert Cromarty took a shot at it. Comes back second and 10. Corners are well off. Moss and Wayne. They go in end zone. Wayne, double coverage. Johnson was there. Not a good decision by yeah. Dorsey that time. Don't understand that one. He had Moss coming underneath on the square, and then Moss turned around and looked and said, why not me? Dorsey, the heady quarterback, went for it all when he had an opportunity to throw the crossing route to the wide receiver in motion that time. Great matchup at left tackle. Brian McKinney, the All-American, all big. All he's 6'9", 300 pounds, matched up usually against Alex Brown. Keynes need to reach the 16 for a first down. Incomplete. And it is fourth down for Miami. So a good stand by the Gator defense against Butcher's offense. That's two in a row that this Florida defense has stalled the Miami team when they were in position to put points on the board. And it's going to be another field goal try. That one was deflected at the line of scrimmage that time. Todd Sievers, kicker from Iowa, trots out of the field. This one will be another 44-yard attempt. Missed one already tonight. Trying to get the Canes on the board. Looking good. He's got this one. So Miami kicks a field goal. And they cut into Florida's early lead. Great job. Damian <laughs> Lewis is off to a huge start. And now Ken Dorsey and the Miami offense ready to go. Trailing Florida 7 3, 5 38 to go in the first quarter. Najee Davenport into that backfield. You would expect Miami sooner rather than later to try the running game. He picked their spot to the 36 yard line and over on the other side Gary we think Caldwell is a story after the penalty Yeah, after the penalty he did not participate in the rest of that series he was on the sideline here's the end of that hitch and go or curl and go play gets up first part's okay they're gonna buy that the officials are watching it the second part they say no that's enough that's pushing it too much he goes down to one knee and he gets called 15 and exactly right it changed the play calling for Spurrier the rest of that series Second down and seven. Here comes Jackson again, searches daylight, crashes across the 45-yard line for a Miami first down. Very right across that yellow line, right across very simply the power game of Miami. One of the best offensive lines I've seen Miami have in years. Great offensive tackles. Brent Romberg, their center, very physical, good feet guy. And Jackson, I mean, this guy wants the ball, and he wants to carry the team on his back. Romberg has enjoyed all of New Orleans <laughs> while he has been. Here's Jackson again, quickly to the outside. And Jackson to the 39-yard line of the Gators. And the young man, a senior from Belle Glade, Florida. And he is off to a good start on this series. That's a gain of 16 yards. He's now carried 
five times for 36 yards here tonight. Right, he's the fifth time in Miami history that a back has gained 1,000 yards. He had 98 yards against Florida State in the game. And this is going to make the coverages a lot simpler for Dorsey when he wants to throw the ball. Here comes the safety. Up. They send Jackson out as an extra receiver, and then they run down and the fullback. He's a power for one. He's to the 25-yard line. So the running game is taking control here for the Canes. Yes, and Florida had a mistake. Metal breakdown on this play. One guy goes in motion, and two Florida guys follow, uh, follow the motion that time. Miami comes right in that area, vacated, and run the ball. A perfect call. Miami probing with the running game. Florida, mental mistake, cost him. All rushes on this drive so far. First down, Jackson motions out of that backfield again, and they come right back. And Davenport has popped in the middle that time. Hit hard. Travis Carroll and Mike Nateel in on the tackle. I think you can see 59 really bring the lumber in the middle of that play. And that's really the difference in this Florida defense. When Mike Nateel, Travis Carroll, and Akendo Johnson took over, Hardiman also in linebacker, the run defense got better for Florida since the Mississippi State game when they got torched. No team has averaged four yards per carry in a game against Florida. And again, and this time they send Jackson wide side. They're going to throw back to him on a quick screen. And Jackson's loose inside the 15. That's another Miami first down. Some very, very creative play calling. There is a yellow flag we see down at about the 11-yard line right now. Gary, this is outstanding play calling right now. Once you get the running game going, and this is how Miami's balance really drives their offensive power. Their balance, keeping you off balance on defense, really makes it go. Dead ball, personal foul against the offense. After the first down, the 15-yard penalty, first down. That's a tough penalty, and Butch wants to know who it was and what was it right now. I didn't see it. Usually what happens in that situation is a lineman is running downfield blocking someone after the whistle is blown. So that's costly. It brings the ball all the way back to the 30-yard line. Ball is down. There's one of the linemen. Yep, exactly. That's exactly what happened that time. Bibla, number 65, gets a late block, and they're going to call. It's going to be a first down. Back at the gate of 30. Moss and Wayne right here in tandem right there. You can't do any type of jamming when they're like that. And Clinton Portis in as the running back. They send him to the formation. They start deep. They've got Wayne. Tabuk got it inside the 10-yard line. They had him open. Against Benny Alexander for 21 yards and a first down. Both quarterbacks again. Ian Scott, number 97, forced Dorsey to throw this way too soon. Watch the big guy on the nose tackle. Comes right up the middle, busted assignment. Dorsey has to let it go to avoid the sack, and he trusts his big receiver can go up and get that ball against Alexander. Ball was thrown about 15 yards short. Defensive lines are dominating the football game so far. First and goal. Here comes Jackson back on the field, and uh, he is stopped by Warren. Manuel also gets off the bottom of that pile. Jackson eye at that clock, checking the situation. Looking at replays that show up up there. You see so many of these fellas collegiate, the NFL level, always looking up there. Replays. Second down and goal. And they run Jackson. Well defended that time by Lito Shepard, a young defensive back, and going to be a real good one. Just come up, just delivered the pop. That's what's so tough against Florida. When you talk about what a defense, what team speed means, it means it's hard to get and run around the corner. When you try to stretch this defense out, everybody runs from the inside. You got linebackers filling inside, forcing that back. No move to cut back and letting your DBs come up this time for Shepard and take their feet out from under. 
third down. Here's your two guys right here. Same side. They send Wayne out. A bit of a slot receiver. They can cross him over there. Manuel goes out and then they bring Santana inside. But Dorsey looks back the other way and he's got his tight end. Jeremy Shockey, who caught the game winner against Florida State, scores here to put the Canes ahead for the first time tonight. It was the running game. Absolutely. Got that, got that Florida defense off balance. And when that opened up, all of a sudden, receivers were wide open. And Dorsey on this one was brilliant. Took something off the throw, and his timing was impeccable. And the extra point is added. Back at the Louisiana Superdome, and you could call this game one of our two-game national championship doubleheader here on ABC. Tonight, of course, it is Miami, ranked second by the ESPN USA Today poll, second by the AP, but not by the BCS computers. They dropped them down to third. So tomorrow night, Florida State will meet Oklahoma for that title right here on ABC. And tonight, Miami trying to argue a case for an AP share of that title. Here's Jackson up the middle, breaks free. Fine 12-yard run by Jackson before Todd Johnson, the safety, brings it down. And Miami has discovered something with the running game here tonight. Absolutely. You know, start off the game probing outside, but these big guys inside, LaFair, Romberg, Bibla, Gonzalez, McKinney, these guys are taking that Florida defensive line and say, all right, you want to rush our passer? Well, first you got to stop the run, and then you can go get our passer. They've run on eight of the last 11 plays here. They set up in that eye formation with Santana. Coming in motion, and they'll come right on back with Jackson. And, of course, this makes Ken Dorsey's passing so much more effective. And he's thrown only five interceptions this year with 25 touchdowns. And I had a chance to ask Kenny about why so few interceptions. That's what we've been doing all year is just taking the easy passes. And... Um, the, the ones that don't have a lot of high risk, trying to force balls into places, and that, that's really what's been helping me is the design, the offense, and the way we execute it. Here's my impression, folks. A very, very bright young man. Sees things quickly and easily on the field. Has a very nice California-style personality. Liked him. Complete first down. Miami moves the chains again with Shockey, and let's check in with Jack. Brent, one of the keys to this running game for Miami is the play of Bryant McKinney, their offensive tackle. Now, if you want to see, he has a 92-inch wingspan. How long is that from hand-to-hand? -hand? Well, he put it together with this pole. The only difference with McKinney is it's up here. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you believing that? <laughs> How do you get around that guy? No one ever has. He has not given up a sack, and this time he's matched up against the great, great pass rusher, Alex Brown. First down. Jackson. Across the 45-yard line is Manuel coming up hard from that safety position to, uh, to join the Gators in this uh, run defense right now. 6'8", 330 McKinney is. He's only 21 years old. And uh, he'll be a very rich man one of these days, isn't he? Yes, indeed. Alex Brown comes trotting off to the sideline. Kennard Ellis steps into the lineup. And Alex has been slowed down a little bit here lately. Second down for Dorsey. Got his man underneath beautifully. It was Daryl Jones, young receiver from Dallas Carter High School for 13 yards working on Cromarty. Well, when you want to run a good offense, you need a lot of guys involved in it. You run the ball, you give the ball to the tailback, you have those big uglies up front as everybody refers to them nowadays, and then you fake it to the tailback once in a while and throw the ball to the outside. This is the balance that you have to do it. Look at the tailback, though. Jackson carries it, and he also blocks for Dorsey. Great job by Jackson on that play. Jackson behind Davenport. Got the corner, and a penalty flag is thrown by the referee. 
Well, very unnecessary by Gonzalez at the end of that play. He was holding after Jackson already passed him by. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from spot of the foul. Repeat first down. And this is a brutal, one of those brutal penalties. The holding happened in the backfield, so you get it first and very long. Now. Jordan Portis into the backfield. Oh, play fake by Dorsey, and it's a good one. Got Santana Mas crossing one of his favorite patterns. Out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. A beautiful play fake that time by Kenny Dorsey. Allowed Santana to break wide open. A 32-yard game. What's Florida doing? It's first and long. Same play. They're going to send one guy deep and Santana on the crossing route behind. But why are these linebackers biting first and 25? Easy pass read. Look at Moss. Wide open. That's as easy as you can get. Pitch and catch. You don't have to even be really good to throw that pass. Gary, that was just a beautiful play fake. You saw those two backers bite on it. They went looking at it up here. He, he sold it beautifully that time. First down now for John, Miami. John Hope will not be happy about that. First and 25. Portis. Out of the 12 yard line, and Warren making the stop. Of all the Florida defensive linemen, don't be surprised if number 61, Warren, doesn't go on to have the best career in the NFL one of the, one of those inside fellows and like Cortez and I were talking like that's the one position it's so hard to find quality players around the NFL you uh, you talk to folks who defensive coordinators and player personnel directors they're always looking for those defensive tackles second down now fake by Dorsey fires to the end zone deflected by Manuel number four Flicked it away and not in here, not this time. <laughs> really just a two-man route this time. Tight end goes out and Dorsey tries to time it in there. Very difficult to throw down here when you're only sending two guys out. Those defensive backs, this time the safety is able to read Dorsey's eyes. Did a really beautiful job. Dorsey put it just outside his reach. Might not be as big as McKinney, but it was enough. Question about John Hoke. Someday he could be moving on to become a head coach. He's the defensive coordinator. Look at the success Bob Stoops has enjoyed out of Oklahoma off Steve Spurrier's staff. This is incomplete, overthrown. It allows me to follow up on a story. And I know Gary and Jack Root and all of us here. We want to send our best along to John Cooper. He was fired today as the coach at Ohio State. Uh, they were beaten by South Carolina yesterday in a bowl game. He had a tough record against Michigan and in the bowl games. John was always very nice and uh, his family. We wish him nothing but the best and also the Buckeyes nothing but the best in their search. We have heard that Walt Harris the head coach at Pittsburgh would be one of the leading candidates. That's the gossip that we heard down here around New Orleans. Well he'd do a great job. He was there before when Joe Germain put him in the Rose Bowl. Here's a 29 yarder now and it is good. So Todd Sievers the sophomore kicker from Iowa makes it 13 7 Miami with their best starting field position of this game and looking to find something anything they can here Graham the running back Gaffney slotted outside the left and the whistle prior to the snap. Florida continues to just shoot themselves in the foot. Timeouts, not enough guys. Tight ends moving. This time the tackle moves. Prior to the snap. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Drop balls on passes. Uh, you, you can see it right there. Steve says, I can't call the game when we're going backwards. Against Florida State, Spurrier was hurt time after time by big penalties. Yep. That's one of those unforced ones that you got nobody to blame but yourself. So that knocks the Gators up to the 38. First down. Grossman, middle, got Gaffney at the midfield stripe and got him for a first down. <laughs> and we check in with Jack.
Brent, when the offense comes off the, off the field, the first thing that Rex Grossman does is he sits down with Steve Spurrier. That means guys like Jabbar Gaffney sit on the bench and get very little input. Enter Jesse Palmer. Palmer may be the backup quarterback, but he is the man that literally coaches guys like Gaffney. During that last exchange, Palmer went up to Gaffney, told him where he thought he could get open, and then you see this catch. Yeah, Good right. coaching by that backup quarterback. <laughs> First down and 10. Inside the 45-yard line. Grossman with a deep drop. Looking high. Incomplete. He overthrew Caldwell that time. Well, the Miami corners are just squatting at about 10 yards. And the reason they're able to do that is Al Blades, the safety, number seven, is lined up extremely deep in the secondary. That means the corners are gambling and they're waiting for Blades to kind of clean it up for them or save them deep if they're going to go deep. And Lito Shepard checks in again on offense. Number three, and they line him up in that wide open formation again. Grossman pump fake looking hit on the release by Morgan. Almost intercepted by Blades as a result, and it was Morgan pouring in on Grossman. Boy, does that guy have some closing speed? Like a Stephen Boyd in Boston College or a Zach Thomas down there at Texas Tech. This guy is going to be an impact player in the NFL. All out, he's going to loop around the backside of this thing. And as Grossman tries to run the hitch and go this team time, Morgan says, uh-uh, I'm coming and watch him close. That's a big time play. Grossman this quarter is only four of 10 for 48 yards. He's averaging 4.8 yards a pass, and that's not good. Third down, and Grossman pulling back. High cut, first down. Caldwell laps up another one at the 32-yard line for 12 yards. He has been the key receiver. Five catches for 95. Well, again, the Miami safeties are playing very deep. That means you throw the crossing, you throw the curl. There's nothing really magical here. Throw it against the linebackers. You see the corner's going to have to trail in, but there's no safety in the picture. Sooner or later, Butch Davis, Chuck Pagano, the two defensive coaches are going to have to move those safeties back up into the football game. You don't even see them in the picture. You see it. Just two guys in the box. Six guys in the box right here. And here comes Graham, and Morgan is there to meet him fiercely at the 35-yard line, the defensive player of the year. Second down and 12. In safety this time, little blitz and Grossman knows it. Clock running out on him that time. Prior to the snap, delay of game in the offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Sixth penalty for 50 yards against Florida here in the first half, Jack. Brent, there's a long-standing tradition for linebackers that involves the number 44 and one of the men that made it famous, you know, that Oklahoma Sooner, Brian Bosworth. There's a Brian Bosworth T-shirt that has been circulated for years. It was given to Dan Morgan. Morgan brings it to every game. At the end of this game, he'll have to determine a 44 next year to give it to, not necessarily on his team. Second down and 17. Grossman. Drops it off in the flat underneath to Aaron Walker. Gators need to reach the Canes. 21-yard line for the first down. Gaffney through the formation. Grossman, middle incomplete, and Morgan had Gaffney that time, and I mean he was all over him at the 30-yard line. They were looking for number 10, and Morgan said, I don't think so. Ran a very similar play that they scored the touchdown on, but this time Miami's dropped in the zone and didn't give it. Both receivers come inside and then curl back out, watch the tight end cross underneath. When Gaffney comes back out, nobody there. There's not open. Caldwell's not open, and the ball guy was thrown to. Gaffney was not open on that play. Good defense. This is a 51-yard attempt by Chandler. Kevin McKinnon is the holder. He's got a strong leg. Got a shot at it. You bet. 
Cuts that lead in half for that 51 yarder. That's a big lift for Spurrier skaters. 13 10, Miami leads it. This is what you. After the Nokia Sugar Bowl, Miami leads Florida 13 to 10. You can take a look at our first half stats. The only turnover was that late interception thrown by Florida after they'd used their timeouts down in the end zone. Everything else is pretty even. Now, our AT&T player comparison here, Gary. We take a look at our two quarterbacks. And this is also pretty even, and a lot of mistakes made by Dorsey to get him throwing less than 50%. Grossman's got to having to avoid the pass rush, making plays, and he's also had some drop balls against him. Interesting. Pretty much of a defensive game. It really is. So far, it hasn't broken open. That, that has surprised me in this game, and I think what you're seeing is athletes on both sides of this defense kind of dominating these offensive teams, and, you know, usually Miami and Florida kind of overwhelm other teams they play all year, but when you match them up even and even it's like watching the NFL on Sunday the defensive players are tough to account for it's kind of like the NFL and you know we got a lot of players yeah. are going to go on to the NFL <laughs> exactly. and uh, you get into the playoff situation and uh, defenses tend to dominate uh, right. that's what we're seeing here tonight is Ken Dorsey Ken Dorsey has to really focus in on his reads here the second half of the game I thought it was one series called very badly for him where he went deep on two straight plays but after that, I think he kind of was trying to get too many big chunks in the passing game. Grossman, he needs to continue to pick against that Miami defense. They're starting to squat, though, now, Brent. They need to do that little stutter and go against them. Well, just a short time ago, Jack Arut spoke with Miami coach Butch Davis. Let's talk a little bit about the first half. Your running game got very effective. Do you stick with it? Well, yeah, our football team is absolutely at its best when we're having some success running the football. We uh, we really missed some chances. We had to settle some from field goals that we really like we pushed them in and gotten some touchdowns. But we've got to keep doing the things that we're doing. Be efficient, take care of the ball, play good on defense. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. You know, one of the things that adds value to the Miami season has been the performance of the Big East and the Bulls so far. Yes. They are three and one. Boston College, a big winner over in Honolulu. West Virginia down in Mississippi in the Music City Bowl in Nashville. Pittsburgh was their lone loser. Tough game against Iowa State in Phoenix. And then in the Gator Bowl, Virginia Tech coming away with that 41 20 win and so I think that gives a lot of value to the schedule and maybe we should ask those computer guys did you undervalue the Big East results this year you got to wonder about that well, There's been pretty good bowl performance here now Brent you know it's all about matchups and some of these matchups I think favored uh, the Big East teams and especially a healthy Michael Vick remember when Miami played against Virginia Tech Michael Vick was not a hundred percent in that football game. Well if they can win this one Miami they'd be 2 and 0 against the SEC in the Bulls. That's always impressive. Here comes Jones out now. For the Canes to the 22 yard line and uh, Jack how about uh, the injury report. Well Portis is absolutely OK just had his bell rung but the news is not as good for James Jackson. Jackson had, had such a great running game going for the Miami Hurricanes Brent. He has been taken to the Saints locker room to have his foot x-ray. They suspect there may be a problem beyond a sprained foot. Yeah, that's too bad. So uh, Jack will continue checking reports there and that probably means Portis. Yeah, he's in there at that tailback spot. He'll have to carry the load now without Jackson. Davenport could switch from fullback to tailback if they need him. And a play fake, but it's Brown from behind with the game's first sack. Big number 13 came rumbling around from the left defensive end spot that time. He beat Gonzalez. He did not believe in the play fake at all that time. Brown was on go for the quarterback. He said, you're not running the ball at first down. Look, at he got off before the snap right around the corner. Gonzalez did not get his hands on him. And that's really a surprising sack against those two outstanding tackles for Miami. And that's very disheartening to this offense. Eight yard loss. Tough second down here for Dorsey and the Canes. And Porter's will pick his way just out to the 17 yard line. It'll be now third and long for Miami. Third down. Here comes Alex, and he gets picked up this time by Portis, and rolling the other way, intercepted, Ratliff's got it at the 40. Picked off as Dorsey on the move, threw a bad pass, and Kewan Ratliff, the freshman from Columbus, Ohio, picked it off. Well, the sack 
forced a change in strategy. They brought Dorsey outside of the pocket. He's not comfortable throwing on the run, and then he tries to force the ball downfield. Look at Portis has to block Brown one on one. Dorsey knows that, but then he forces it down. He's got away with a bunch of these, but now you're throwing the ball to someone on half the field, and that safety comes across and eats that play up all the time. Finally, Dorsey playing with fire gets burned. Rex Grossman and the Gators start from the Canes 36 with their first possession of the second half. Graham runs daylight, huge hole. Battles off the corner and goes for a touchdown. Oh, Blades blew the tackle. Oh, how did he ever get by number seven? Big time run by Ernest Graham, the sophomore from Fort Myers. Oh, Ratliff got it, the interception on a terrible play by Dorsey. And you're right, Blades tried to go high. And on this tough running back, the straight arm put Blades in the back pedal very quickly. And the last one of the first half was 41 yards. The first one of this half, a touchdown. Chandler for the four, and there's movement down in that line. And uh, short time ago, and, and I'm going to give Gary, full credit as we watched Graham on his touchdown, he had said to me, big game experience favors Florida. They've been in tough situations. And look what happens. They get a turnover here. And right away, Graham comes. There is Blades is fanning on the tackle yeah. to a terrible <laughs> effort. To a, you know, I don't know about the, you know, the effort. The technique was terrible. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy that. Word. You know, I mean, defense outside. Better work. We have the distance to go. We try but I, I think that sack, that first down sack, really threw Miami in a defensive mode. They didn't, that, that first down play called the sack. All of a sudden, they try to run a, a scramble to the outside, and Dorsey kind of a fish out of water in that scramble to the outside. He'd been playing with fire all day, as I said before, and that time picked off for a turnover touchdown. Next to point. Too tired of ugly. Gus Scott, number 37, checks in. Unfortunately for Miami, they don't have Santana Moss, and they don't have James Jackson right now. So a fierce toll being taken down there on both sides. Dorsey under pressure, and it is complete. Jones trying to pick up the slack with Santana out, and he twists to the 34, a gain of 13. Alex Brown is unbelievable getting off the line of scrimmage right here. You don't have much time, and this is why the timing route like this. Get it back. Brown's going to come in there. Get rid of it, Dorsey. Throw it. Nice timing. There's that little hook route, 10, 12-yard route that everybody has on the offense and needs to be used against quick rushing teams. Dorsey has to change up the snap count. Right now, Brown has a feel for the snap, and he's getting off like lightning. They need to draw him off sides a couple times. Using two tight ends without Santana. Come to the running game with Portis. Slips inside, and suddenly three Gators just slam the door shut, led by Buck Gurley, number 99. And let's check in again with Jack Aru. Well, Grant, while you check in with William Mark, Manuel is about ready to go back into the game. Why? It's a simple elbow sprain. He said, hey, I can play through a lot more pain than that. They'll need him out there, too. Ellis checks in now, and Alex Brown will take a break. He has been a warrior here tonight. They go three-man line this time and use linebackers to come around the corner. And they're going to run on it. Short of the first down. Travis Carroll was there, but so too was Gus Scott who moved up. Well, Clinton Portis was kind of ribbing Jackson all week that he was going to be the leading rusher in this football game. As you look at Manuel back in the football game, if he is, that's not going to be good news for Miami. Third down and two. Williams at fullback in front of Portis. The toss to Portis behind Williams. The freshman gets the block. 
and Portis busts the 50-yard line for a game first down, 11 yards. First time I've seen Miami get around the corner of this quick Florida defense. I think Florida was really geared in to an inside run this time. They bring the tight end across and watch the hook block out here, and Williams comes back out and picks up the linebacker to the outside. This is what you want to do. you got to feel for it. Williams comes around, low block on the linebacker, and there you go. Portis gets the huge first down for Miami. It's Gonzalez down, isn't it? This is a fierce game. Yeah, we really have is. had one player after another. So it's cold outside. It's now only 36 degrees as we dip down near that freezing mark, and the winds stand about the same. Oh, it's chilly with that wind comes in off the river down well, there. Whoa. Where I'm headed eventually, this is uh, would be in, uh, golf weather. 36 degrees. <laughs> 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 Got to go back to Detroit, not yeah, Naples. I, I, I gotta go. Okay, first down now. Vernon Carey checks in at that right tackle spot. You know the Gators will try to attack it. Dorsey goes sideline. Got it for another first down at the 35. Chucky for 11 yards. Well, he's a big time receiver. He is really valuable because he's a tight end and he blocks, but he also is able to split out and go against the strong safety and run like a wide receiver. The guys in Miami say he's a wide receiver in a tight end body. And when you watch him practice, he makes catch after catch after catch in practice. And that's when your quarterback gains a little confidence throwing to those big tall guys. Gonzalez returns to right tackle after missing that one play. First down. They come back with Davenport. Nothing much doing. Travis Carroll, number 55, leading the Gator defensive charge that time. And uh, this is just about as tough a football game yep. as you can imagine. And again, some of you uh, read the reports of the, of the Donnie Brook that started over in the French Quarter last Wednesday. About 20 players, we are told, got into it, and it, it wasn't just all mouthing and pushing and shoving. There were there were some pretty good punches thrown, and fortunately, fortunately, nobody was hurt. You know, it's so easy to twist the knee or fall and hit the concrete. Kind of a stupid thing to do. Second down now, and Dorsey rolls. Looks for an open man, gets a block on that corner, and takes it out of bounds for a gain of about four yards. Uh, it's going to be 15 yards on Miami there. Late play, and it's going to cost them. D.J. Williams, the freshman. Gerard Warren that time made an effort to get Dorsey, and then Williams came back and I think shoved Warren when he was down. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Look at the end of this play. Warren dives out, overcomes Williams on the play, shoves Browns over, and the flag goes out. But I think that's a good pickup. Make me look bad instead of the game look bad. That's always been. So it goes to third down. The Canes with the ball at the Florida 32-yard line. They need to get inside the 25 here. They need, they need seven yards to pick up the first down. They trail by four. Gators show blitz, and they're coming on Dorsey. It's picked up, fired, got it. Nice reach back that time by Andre King, number 84 to pull it in for the first down. This is when it helped to be a big quarterback, tall, because look at the pressure inside that Dorsey's going to get, and he just kind of throws over it this time. Pressure there, thrown from the well, puts it right there, and a nice reach back. That is a big-time play, helping out the big pass from King that time. Good recognition by Portis, too, Gary. We saw him yep. slip out. He saw the corner coming in. Davenport and Williams are the running backs. Big back attack, and it'll be Davenport behind Williams on a cut block on Manuel. Penalty flag is thrown. Davenport, the ball carrier, flags on the blades. Travis Carroll on the tackle. See, I'm not real dumb. I know now it'd be quiet until they give me the penalty. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> One interception's enough, that's all. Exactly. <laughs> so 
There's Butch Davis. Done such a fine job down at Miami. Every time an NFL job opens up, he's rumored to be headed there. He was interviewed by the Houston folks, not to mention Steve Spurrier. Washington Redskins did inquire, and Steve said no, very happy, and has an extension. Highest paid coach in college football. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty has spotted a foul. Still first down. If, if my memory is correct, this is about the fourth time Miami's been inside the 30 yard line, and they've. It, it, They've scored once, but I think there's three or four times they've been forced into field goal attempts, and that's good defense by this Florida team. So here comes the long first down now. Play fake. Dorsey on the move through low to Williams, and it was defended by Byron Hartman, number 42, the sophomore. He was right there. And uh, Jack, uh, what about Santana and Jackson for Miami? Well, Brett, good news and bad news. Bad news is for James Jackson. We will not see him the rest of the evening. Indeed, the negatives have turned up a problem with his foot. Now, for Santana Moss, I just talked to John Uribe, who's the orthopedic surgeon, and he says it's a slightly sprained back for Santana Moss. They feel that they'll be able to get him back. Just not sure when. Yeah, so they lose their leading rusher, Jackson. 62 yards here tonight on 12 carries. Timeout being called by Miami. Santana Moss is back, stretching, trying to get the back limber over there. Miami, meanwhile, dominating this quarter, Gary. Yeah, one play by Florida, but it's equal a TD. I'll take that. <laughs> and the result is a 17-13 Gator lead right now. Eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Second and 22 for Miami. And now it's third and 22. As Dorsey. Down again. And here's a penalty flag. Dorsey's been getting knocked down almost every time he throws the ball, or at least someone in his face when he throws the ball, and that's causing a lot of errant passes. Dropping the quarterback on the defense. 15 oh, man. Oh, jeez. Let's see what happened. Dorsey still has the ball, still has the ball, gets hit. Well, I'm in agreement. I thought that Warren reached in after the ball was released and pulled him down off the jersey. That's what I thought right there. Just yanked him back. Now, I'm not sure that the referee, Gary, has any other choice in that yeah, situation. Probably. I, you know, it's so is, easy for he might not have, you know, right, hurt it, is, but you've got to let go in that situation. Dorsey is slightly built, and Warren goes 300 pounds. That was an easy teardown right there. Yeah, he has been whacked and sacked here tonight, but huge penalty. First down, slant, no, badly thrown ball, and almost picked off by Alexander. Oh, he had him on the slant. Dorsey is off. He's not nearly as sharp as he was against Florida State. He's throwing more like he did against Washington in the first half in Seattle. Yeah, he had a bad game in that Washington game, but here he leads the receiver way too much. Should have been picked off. Lito Shepard has not been in the game for a while for Florida either so far in this series. Alexander's in there. And you wonder where, what's wrong with Lita. Second and ten for the Canes. Great protection. Doc Williams, touchdown Miami. Credit the offensive line, folks. They let Dorsey stand there and stand there. And D.J. Williams, the freshman, broke wide open down by the five-yard line. A 19-yard touchdown against the Gators. And, and you said it before he caught it, Brent. Protection, and when you give a guy like Dorsey protection, he really does what he does best. There's the fullback. Throw the ball with touch. A little flat and go. Two guys follow the tight end, and you wonder if spreading that Florida defense a little thin without Shepard, the corner, should have fallen off and made that play. Sievers adds the extra point. And six. And it shows big tight ends for Miami. Both of them are playmakers. One point. No, great fake again, and they come out to the tight end. 
It is shocking who scored that touchdown. And the young man, Ken Dorsey, with another superb play fake and a 16-yard gain. Very simply coming across, coming inside, very similar to the touchdown route. Clear the defense. When you got a defense, you think those tight ends, they're playmakers, come back out and says, hey, Florida's trying to stop us from scoring, so you do a little misdirection and, and throw, and Brent, it's weapons. Weapons, weapons, weapons this Miami offense has. He absolutely froze the two linebackers yep. again. He made them stand there and respect the play action. Davenport, the big back, with the call, top. He had to be a world-class long <laughs> jumper. Take it in from there. He'd have been out there in Powell and Beeman territory. Wow, he took it off, didn't he? Well, he went to the right side. He went behind McKinney and LaFair, the big side, the strength of that offensive line, and uh, got pretty good yard on it, yardage on it, set it up for possibility of running it right and jamming it into the end zone. Second down is also the down Miami likes to use their little play action and slide their fullback into the flat. Get the clock situation all straightened out here. Now he winds it. And here we go. And DJ Williams at the tailback spot this time. Davenport would be the lead blocker if they want to try and play fake Dorsey's looking for Davenport. Can he get there? Sure. Go! Oh, my, what a catch for a touchdown! Oh, Najee Davenport took it away from the DB. Second down is the play action down. Big score for Butch Davis and the Canes. A chance to take a 10-point lead. And the staff with a terrific call. High snap is quickly brought down, and the lead is 10. Now this was a pretty gutsy throw by Dorsey right here. This, Davenport was not wide open, but the touch of Dorsey throwing it in there. Big re risk, big, re big reward. Gonna slide Davenport right out of here, take the tight end to the back, watch the coverage. This is decent coverage with the linebacker right on him that time. Kendo Johnson, watch the touch. Throws it to the outside, just outside. Kendo Johnson, make a play on the ball. Looked like it went I right through his if hands. If you watch this, Kendo Johnson probably should bat it away. Absolutely. Instead he goes up trying to make the pick, and it goes right through his hands. And Davenport has the touchdown instead. I wonder if we could watch it one more time. Did Davenport nudge him from behind with his body? See if he nudges him to throw him off balance. A perfect play. Watch the right shoulder. That actually what happens. He goes to get the ball, and Johnson misjudges it right at the last second. 27 17. What a play by Davenport. What a throw by Dorsey. A gutsy throw. That could have been an interception. And everybody would have been saying, why are you throwing that ball? Well, the big question now, Gary, is whether or not the Gators have enough firepower to get back in against his defense. I think they do. They can't give up any more points, but they continue. I think with Grossman throwing the ball, they continue to probe the ball. They just got to hold on to it. I mean, they got to catch some of those great throws. Well, over on the sideline is a... Young man whose daddy you certainly remember. There's Jared oh, yeah. Payton, Walter's son, number 34. He's been redshirted this year, and uh, Miami still expects big things from Jared. A uh, running back. Interesting story about recruiting him. Walter did not want him to be a running back, wanted to be a safety. He asked Butch Davis, What are you going to do with my son? And he said, I'm going to make him a running back. He wants to be a running back. And Walter said, oh, Okay. And here's Rex Grossman from that pocket middle. And Gaffney makes a fine catch that time. Reaches up at midfield, hangs onto the ball, and just like Gary Danielson pointed out, that's what the Gators must do in the fourth quarter. They really do. If you're going to throw the ball in Florida, you have to be good enough to throw the ball over the middle. And if you're a receiver, you have to be tough enough to catch the ball over the middle. Gaffney had a couple of drops, but in the toughest one of all, he went up and got it, and they're still in the ball game. When you can throw the ball like that, there's plenty of time. Just love the way they attack the field in this pass offense for Florida. 
Graham again. Slips a tackle. Runs behind Caldwell, who does a good job of blocking. And if they give him the spot, they will. That's another first down for Ernest Graham, who's like a heavyweight fighter down there, taking it on. This is some fierce contest here tonight in New Orleans. Well, Ernest Graham thought so highly of coming out of high school. He was the workhorse, injured a year ago. Kind of started off slowly this year. Everybody was a little bit uh, wondering where he was and why he didn't produce those yards. But as he's gotten to be the featured back, he really looks much better. Just give him the ball and give him the ball. Inside the cane, 40. Nice blend right now for Floyd. Hit on the release. Is there a flag? You bet there is. Caldwell cut and couldn't get around Philip Buchanan, who interfered with him yeah. on that play. There was there was no question about it. And Brent, there's probably not much Buchanan could have done. The ball was thrown behind him in short, and uh, Grossman got hit right at the end. By, I think it was by Lewis again. Was it Lewis again? What a great game this guy's having. That produces the short pass, but you can see Buchanan. He has no idea it's short. And when Caldwell tries to get it, it's going to cost us 15 yards. Not much you can do on that one. Just give it a little smile. Big difference from the NFL. They don't give them the spot of the interference. It's uh, the 15, and it'll take it inside the 25. Gary, which rule do you like better, the I, NFL or the college? I think the NFL should add a rule. I think it needs to be a judgment. If they clearly pull him down, give it at the point. But if it's just incidental, make it a 15-yard penalty. Give the referees another one to blow. <laughs> <laughs> First half of Grossman. You buying that one? Yeah, I like it. That's <laughs> a good idea. Here comes Graham. And tough, tough yard that time. Oh, you see big Kenyatta Walker, number 78. Okay. Some of the defensive players, Blades there. I mean, it was Damian Lewis again blowing up this play inside, and he's playing like sap and... Cortez Kennedy over there. I think those guys must have told him that we signed checks for six million. I mean, we get paid six million dollar bonuses. Come in and dominate. Watch number 92 again in the backfield. All night he's been playing with effort like that. And I think the big guys on the sidelines said, Damien, you want to make some money? Just get in the backfield. You can make money like that guy right there. Warren said. Second down, and Hagerberg is in that left slot for Grossman. Now he's got to watch the clock. Yep. Once the Canes jumped late, Grossman went to a second audible against a late move by the defense, and the Gators jump, and it cost them. That is the ninth penalty against Spurrier's team here tonight. It cost them five yards, but I think they would have got sacked anyway, and they would have lost a down on it. So maybe five yards and getting second down over isn't the worst thing in that situation to happen. Florida's already burned a timeout, and they're down 10 points. They can't burn any more. Butch Davis, one-time defensive coordinator for Jimmy Johnson at Dallas, pulling some NFL rabbits out of the hat with that late move by the defense. Here now is Graham to daylight. 20, 15. Blades takes him out of bounds at the nine-yard line. It'll be first and goal after a 20-yard run. Graham now has run for 135 yards. Great block by Rod Frazier that time. Number 40, watch the fullback. He's blocked right now in front of Graham. There he is. Watch him come out and cut down the linebacker. That makes the play. When you get your fullback, take out that outside leg, you can pick up 40 uh, 20 yards and that Frazier name is very very familiar to a lot of football fans in college football that is Tommy Frazier's brother Tommy of course carved up <laughs> the Gators and Nebraska won that national championship scoring 62 on them over in Tempe that record broken <laughs> Nebraska did it in Northwestern over through Caldwell in the corner of the end zone on first down. And uh, the receiver is down over there. Riche shaken up on the play. Now he appears to be okay. Grossman got away with one here. Eddie Reed, the safety, is baiting him to throw the fade. Watch him start to run immediately at the snap. He's got the fade. 
Watch this. He runs. I got you deep. I got you deep. He almost gets there and gets his ninth interception of the year. One more step, and he would have had it. That's how you got to be careful if you're a quarterback. Find the free safety. Hold them before you throw the field. Reed from right here in Louisiana. A lot of friends and relatives watching him shot drop. Put fire high and complete. Rumpf, number eight, defending Gaffney on that play, but the ball was thrown too high. Amazing watching number 92, Lewis, just go through the middle of that Florida line. Remember, Florida State only had one sack in the game against Florida. Miami has pressured them, I think, more than Florida State did in the game we watched. Put more pressure on the quarterback. Haven't been getting sacks, but they've been pressuring the quarterback. There's a late personnel change by Miami. They think they've got a read on this play. Six defensive backs. Grossman shotgun look. Fires. No. Caldwell and Myers there. It's a big three points, though. Gets it back to seven. Graham was open. Graham is going to slide out to the outside. They try to go to Caldwell on the hook inside the end zone right there. Watch Graham right in the flat. Could have got it to him and maybe turned it up with the big fullback and got in the end zone. Grossman went for the touchdown. Not, you know, you can't really fault him on that. But sitting up here, I'll bet you Spur Steve goes, you could have gone to the back. Chandler with a 26-yard field goal, and it's important. So he pulls it down to a seven-point Miami lead with 12.50 to go. Second leading rusher, 12 this game. He's only run the ball 77 times this season. Back to that running game with Portis. Breaks free. 25 from behind at the 11-yard line, run down by Daryl Owens. A 35-yard first for Clinton Portis, the sophomore from Gainesville. And wouldn't he like to have a big game against the Gators? Well, remember, Florida said, we want you as a defensive back. He says, I want to play running back. Sometimes the player's right, and Portis looks like he's got a bright future. Smart runner, a lot of talent. He and Jared Payton next year are going to be a tremendous duo at tailback. That offensive line, the power of that offensive line, this is a great drive. Portis told Jackson he'd have rushing tonight, and he has <laughs> lost one, gave it back that time on the penetrating move by Warren. Warren. Eight and a half minutes, and the Gators need a stop. They yeah. trail it by seven. They're trying to keep the Canes out of the end zone. Ten is manageable, not good. Fourteen is uphill all the way. Here comes the tenth play. to throw for it. Got daylight to Santana made a grab and went out of bounds. Out of bounds, no touchdown. Oh, beautiful audible that time from Dorsey. He saw the safety coming in the middle. He signaled the hand signal out to Moss. That time he faked the quick slant and went for the fade. This is being a quarterback. This is what you got to do. Do the field study, check off to the right thing, Fake the slant this time. A little late with the ball. He could have thrown it just a fraction earlier. Obviously, he should have kept it on the field. Does he come down? No. Great call by the official. Here's third down. You just don't throw the ball when you're a quarterback. You think your team into the, in the end zone, and that's what on this drive Dorsey's been doing. And remember, Shockey has been a big target. He's already scored one here today from that tight end spot. We'll throw back underneath, and it is dropped by Shockey. Right. A little bit behind him that time. No way he could have scored. Good idea, good plan, good read. Two poor throws, or not great throws. Let's be more fair to Kenny. Two not great throws. They could have scored a touchdown with the first one. 
pass. So Butch Davis is keen. Kill 458. 458 off the clock for that drive. Now Todd Sievers to boost them back to a 10 point advantage with this 29 yard. Just shaved the upright. 748 remaining in the football game. So Portis, 14 carries on the day, 81 yards, the leading Miami rusher, and this run sets up the field goal. 30 to 20, Miami. Carroll ready. 748. Short. Picked up by a kite. And kite is smacked around the 20 yard line. So Grossman trots back onto the field. You know, he's 18 for 40, Brent, but the pressure he's been under and the drop balls, I think he's played a pretty good game tonight. Second half, they have never been in sync. I, you know, you, you've mentioned a couple times you think Miami has a, a, a handle on what they're doing. I do think they have their audible call. Maybe they have more than that. Yeah, I, they have really jumped the Gators' plays here tonight. First down and ten. Grossman and intercepted. Picked off by Buchanan. And right now, Spurrier is second-guessing himself for not changing quarterbacks. <laughs> he thought about Jesse Palmer, and he's second-guessing himself right now. Well, Grossman just figured that he had the underneath guy, and that time, it, you had Philip Buchanan just reading his eyes. He's standing right here, okay? This guy's going to go down. This guy's coming right underneath. And Buchanan says, I'm sitting right here in zone, and I'm looking at you, and I'm not going anywhere. I stand there, I read the delay, I step right in front of it, and when you're quarterback getting hit just as you're letting go, you don't see what's happening. Grossman forced it, paid the price. Here's Portis. Right now, trying to wind up with a 100-yard night. And our aerial coverage tonight here in New Orleans provided by Nokia on a bitterly cold night by certainly by New Orleans standards the other day they even had snow flurries here around the area the hearts are warm though because of the New Orleans Saints who will move on up to Minnesota this week the NFL playoffs having won their first playoff game ever what a what a treat that was to, to watch the fans as the curse was eliminated here from the Louisiana Super Bowl 654 now and the Canes are going for the coup de ball game. Dorsey going to throw down and point again. Incomplete. Third down. Dorsey's got a wide open Wayne who's been quiet. First down at the five yard line. Boy, as it was that beautiful. That's a big time receiver right there. He just snatched that ball. Great timing. Dorsey has the great feel for throwing the receivers coming towards him. He takes something off. Same play, really, that was interception. One guy goes, one guy clears for the next. Watch this. One guy clears it. Same play. But there's the ball a little earlier. And what a snatch. And look at that one hand just turns it upfield. Pat is a big time receiver. First catch since the opening quarter. Kid you not, I, there's a lot of NFL teams who trade their two receivers for these two guys, even up. First and goal. Portis to the middle, battling to the end zone. Still battling away. Stop just short. Second and goal for the one. Well, Portis. Ran for 138 yards this last year when he made freshman All-American and running back. This time, controls the ball, covers up, and just short. Manuel just stops him and, well, actually, he fell forward, but, you know, I think Miami will take second in inches. Folks, this next play 
could be for the BCS computers. Just a little message here. <laughs> Davenport is stopped. The Gators say not this time. The teal. Trying to get another touchdown now. They've got only one chance to win a share of the national title. It's a big stop. Keep it to 13 points right here. That it is. Remember, Florida State. Ran up and down in the second half on the Gators. Which knows is it for style points right now. Yeah. So up by 10, he came into the game favored by a touchdown. Davenport still battling to the end zone. No signal yet. No signal. No. Hands go up. Davenport would not be denied. And a penalty flag comes. It's gonna be it's gonna be on the on the hurricane coming in there right at the end. Double zero right there. That's who got the 15. <laughs> I was, that may be my favorite penalty of the year. <laughs> I was, <laughs> Butch, go get that. He says, go get that hey, mascot. Get that? off the field. Get that S. What uh, this? Starts with an S, ends with a B. <laughs> 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 I was, <laughs> oh, Davenport, push forward. Falls <laughs> over. And out. Here comes Ibis. Yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Way to go. 15 yards. <laughs> Gives him a big chest for 15 yards to Iggy Ibis. <laughs> and Butch says, get him out of here. Ibis it is. <laughs> There's the long extra point. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Do we have another play? Yeah, we do. Illegal participation on the kicking team. There were 12 men on the field. There'll be a 15 yard penalty. We kick. If he could get his hands on that mascot right now, right. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, he's choking. And, and, it, and it is an important point because, you know, eight and eight, it's still a two possession game. So, you know, I mean, it makes it the 17th point is a big point. Absolutely. You know, you know, coaches, they think the worst all the time. And... Well, Todd Sievers has had a 50 yard extra point once already this year. And, uh, We've got about a 43-yarder. This will be a 50. Oh, my and he makes it. <laughs> oh, the mascot is off the hook. He should rush out. No, maybe not. The checks in there etched on the Gators' faces as they watch the final 3-11 with Palmer in the offense trying to march into the end zone. And a long tackle on Gaffney at the 35-yard line. We check in with Jack. Well, Brent, Jesse Palmer says he's got tons of experience engineering come from behind drives. He says, you know, I've done it thousands of times on EA Sports John Madden football. <laughs> well, he needs to press the reset button to win this one, I think. Short drop got Gaffney. And he steps out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. I think we're going to hear a little bit more from the Miami boys after this game than before the game. Butch did a nice job of focusing his team on this game. Yeah, they uh, they certainly handled it in a high-class manner, uh, being denied a shot at the FedEx Orange Bowl. And uh, they've said all the right things, but you know down inside how they feel. Hi! Incomplete. Hagerbrook. And uh, in fact, I asked Butch Davis about the national championship situation, and here's what he said. 
If we're fortunate enough to win the game and things go the way we would like for it to go in the, in the Orange Bowl, that clearly uh, I think it presents an argument that, that maybe we should have a split national championship. We've had a great season, uh, beating the number one, number two teams in the country, uh, undefeated in our conference, a nine-game winning streak. Yes, indeed, they've had a great season. Incomplete. Caldwell, the intended target. Defended by Myers. Well, they won all seven of their Big East games by at least 20 points. And uh, the only thing that they might second-guess themselves uh, for is that scheduling that McNeese State game early in the year. That I, was know, the difference right, in I the BCS computers. The, the computer people have already admitted because Division I AA right. is not factored in to most of those computer rankings. And so the difference was McNeese State. As Palmer pulls it back out on fourth down, first down with Carroll. And the clock will stop inside the 20 yard line at 237. Now remember late against Florida State, the Gators had the clock run out inside the five yard line and could not score a late touchdown. Butch Davis and the coaches and players are trying to hold on and deny Florida a late touchdown here with a 17 point lead. Here's Carroll. Close to the 10 yard line. Well, Florida's schedule next year, well, kind of answers that. They, they got a nice schedule next year. Palmer brings him up to the line with 2.08 to go from the 11 yard line. The middle intercepted by Morgan at the goal line. The defensive player of the year brings it all the way back out to the 26 yard line. And who knows how many AP voters That's right. that might have impressed with that interception back at the goal line right now. Just sits in the middle, right there, watching Palmer all the way. Palmer tries to float it over Morgan's head. He knows he's there, tries to float it over his head, but Morgan just goes up and uh, says, uh, uh I used to play, I was a high school running back. I know what to do when the ball's in the air, and you can see <laughs> he's very instinctive and knows exactly how to read those quarterbacks out. The 12 tackles and that interception in a wonderful career. Now first down. Here comes Portis, who's had a big night rushing. You know, I've got a suggestion for ESPN Classic. About next Wednesday, I'll replay that entire game. If this thing winds up a split championship, let the public vote on which team they think's the best. This Miami team, folks, is pretty, pretty good. As Portis hammers a first down with 108 to go to bring the clock down next year. If they had played this schedule and marched yeah, through it, you're right. they would have won the national title with the Penn State to get Washington back down there. And of course, remember, the Huskies beat Miami up in Seattle. Do they have an argument? They're only the one loss team. Pretty good schedule next year. The Big East has played well in bowl games. I, it is real hard to look past Miami, Gary. Really I know is. you feel that way. It really is. It's tough, but you know, I, I clearly think the rules were set up before the season started. Everybody knew this could happen, and and it did. You know, and then, you know, I would not be embarrassed if I was Miami to split the national championship. Well, they're going to enjoy this over an old rival, first time in 13 years, you know, and they beat the Gators. <laughs> And they're at least state champs. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> they have they have swept the state. They should hand them a, a second trophy down there in Florida. And that's a pretty good deal in the state of Florida to be state champs. <laughs> Just like the gladiators. They did it as a team. They win it by 17. 37-20. And now Miami will turn it over to Florida State, Oklahoma, and the voters. And.
Let's go down to Jackaroo, Jack. Well, Coach, congratulations. Thank you. It was a great game. Our kids absolutely had as fine a performance as we've had all year. We pride ourselves in playing great at the end of the season. Florida's a damn good football team. They played extremely well. Our kids, uh, you can't say enough. I'm so proud of them. What about...